All right, guys, so we just put that transmission housing onto the transmission, and uh, we just put the steering arm column on there, or steering column, I'm not sure what you call that. Uh, but yeah, the next step I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna work on this floor plate. Uh, I didn't do this on the 64, but I wanted to, and Dad was in a hurry to get it done. Uh, but I wanna, I wanna fix all this. I don't wanna see any little pits. And I know it doesn't, well, there it shows up pretty good. Uh, it's more than surface rust. And that's what I'm gonna do. So we're just gonna bondo that in and then uh, sand it down and get this looking like it's brand new. <laughs> um, this plate, I believe, is bent. When I took it off, yeah, it's definitely bent. I don't know if that shows up on camera or not. Not sure how I'm gonna get that straightened out. Uh, but that is one of the things that I do wanna do is get this plate straightened out, as well as get all those little pits filled in. So here we go, let's get started on this floorboard. Right, guys this is a good sign here uh, we have one empty ziploc bag labeled floor and uh, you know whenever I tear something off I throw all the nuts bolts washers whatever I have from that like the radiator the water pump put them all in a bag uh, the only thing I have left over is this pin right here and I have two lock washers and I know what they're from I use two brand new lock washers uh, and that's the pin off of the brake lever, and I'll take you over here real quick. Yeah, we just bought two brand new ones because I couldn't get those uh, linkage forks off of the rods going to the brakes. So bought two new, don't need this one. And to be honest with you, if you look real close, the cotter key or the cotter pin was broke off inside there to the point where I actually had to uh, grind that side off. So that wasn't any good anyway so here we go all right guys so I, I showed you how pitted up that floor was this is not perfect by no means I'm, I'm gonna sand up on it a little more uh, but yeah it looks a lot a lot better than what it did before we did that so that's what I'm gonna do to all these parts just kind of uh, you know freshen them up get them looking good and then paint it up when I'm done Next step, one touch. We're gonna to throw the hydraulic system up here and start working on it. Let's get started. Right, guys there it is that's the uh, hydraulic unit for the uh, 53 farmall cub better known as the one touch i guess and i'm not going to sugarcoat this i have no idea on uh you know how to take this thing apart uh but i'll set you up over here on the workbench and uh i'll show you guys what i do i mean i just look for nuts bolts and take them out and try to remember where they all go uh, I do know that there are some filters inside here, so we'll try to, uh, when we bust this end off, we'll try to get the camera as close as we can, but I'll be honest with you, whenever I fire this camera up, nothing goes the way it's supposed to. Uh, so I don't do how-to videos, and it will be in fast forward. Here we go.
So I know some of you guys are probably sitting at home saying, that'll never work again, redneck tearing this apart like that. Uh, let me just give you a little back story. Uh, I was in the Navy, I was an Airedale. I worked on F-18s, I was an AMS, Aviation Metal Smith, and we shared the shop with the AMH, which is the uh, Aviation Mechanical Hydraulics. Um, so yeah, I know a little bit about hydraulics. I'm not gonna say I know everything about it, I don't think I can get my hands on any trichloro trifluoroethane to get this all cleaned up, but I'm pretty sure that we can find something that will uh, clean this out once I'm done messing with it that won't leave a residue behind that'll hurt the uh, hydraulic fluid or in this case, I'm not sure if it's hydraulic fluid, if it's brake fluid, or if it's just 10W30 or something like that. So we gotta look into that, but uh, yeah, we're working on it. All right, uh, so we got all the uh, bolts out of it and I stuck a screwdriver in there just enough to break it loose. I did not take it off yet. I figured I'd bring you guys along with me on this because I'm, I'm interested in seeing what's inside here. Whew. Looks like a whole lot of orifices and a whole lot of uh, set screws, Allen screws. A little bit of sludge there on the bottom not terrible not sure what i'm looking at either that would have been over on that side so uh yep let's get this thing cleaned up here we go all right guys now i'm starting to wonder uh, is it ever going to work again we got this thing broke down i think as far as it'll go uh, i do have to take this off that's the control arm that's the spool uh, I do have to take that off because this I want to sandblast, that I can't put in the sandblaster. I'm going to pick up all new gaskets, um, we're going to pick up all new o-rings, and this thing has a ton of o-rings. There's two o-rings in that hole, there's an o-ring on here, there's an o-ring on here, uh, there's an o-ring on there, two o-rings there, one o-ring there, there's a little filter there, there's a big filter here, I know they get replaced. Uh, but when I get ready to start on this, we're done for the night. And with that being said, uh, you know, I, I love this fast orange. Uh, I put that on my hands. You've seen how nasty my hands were. Uh, put that stuff on there, wipe it, clean with a towel, and you're done. Good stuff. Not sponsored by them by no means. But if you guys work on hydraulics, if you work on grease, and you don't have a container of fast orange, that's your loss. All right, guys, uh, we put this in the sandblaster. I blasted until I ran out of air, then we pulled this back out. Uh, the only thing that I did was, you can see the shiny stuff here uh, and here. We were taking out the little nicks, the dings, the bumps. Uh, this needs to come off, so you can see what I'm taking off here. Uh, there's just a little imperfection there, so we'll take that uh, flapper wheel and just hit that. So, yeah, we've done that on every one of these edges that was messed up real bad uh here's a little tidbit of information uh so these are the journals where those uh clamps mounted uh and this does pivot on those journals so what i did was i took painter's tape and i wrapped that around there about once or twice and then i took electrical tape and wrapped that around there about three or four times that way if you hit it with the sandblaster the uh, electrical tape will kind of deflect the sand but yet when you go to take it off, you won't have any sticky residue underneath there. And when I say painter's tape, it's just that blue tape there. So did the same thing over here. And I was surprised once I got the paint off, uh, a lot of the slag was still on the welds. So what you're looking at here are the slag sections that were still on the welds. Um, and I knocked them off after uh, I got them out of the uh, sandblaster. And here, actually, here's a big old piece of slag right here that I didn't knock off yet. Let's, uh, we'll grab that chisel, and this is what I'm talking about. Yeah, so I'm knocking all that slag off as well. Uh, just cleaning up welds, cleaning up uh, mold, and uh, getting her done. 
All right, so now that we're done sandblasting this, we can bring it over to the paint booth. And uh, we want to make sure that our paint booth is dust free, so. Now that it is dust free, we can go over and grab our spray paint and I'm going to give this a coat of primer. Before we do that, I'm just going to lay it down and let's take a look at this. Ooh, wow. <laughs> uh, yeah, not bad. Got everything off except for the metal itself. Here we go, we're gonna prime it up. Come on guys, the spray can view was worth a like. Go down here and smack that like button. Yeah, so uh, we got this side done. We'll let that dry for a few minutes. Then we'll flip it over and stand up on that screw right there and uh, paint the other side. We'll probably put another coat on this side as well, but then we're gonna flip it the other way and paint it from that side as well. Get the spots that we missed on this side. Here we go.